Have you ever wondered what the top speed of a CRF 250L is? No, me neither. But I need to go to the shops, so I'm going to find out. Oh, and it's really cold out there. <sighs> Let's do it. So the plan is, I'm going to ride down to the shop, uh, which is just in town, and on the way there are, it's a bit of dual carriageway, there's some single carriageway, and I've got to go through a town as well, so we'll get to see how she performs, and I'll talk to you about how she performs on all of that, and we might even stop for a coffee as well, maybe, we'll see. It is cold. What? Come on, I'm allowed a coffee and a bit of cake, surely. So this is my 2020 CRF 250L and it's stock. I've done nothing to it uh, that will improve the performance of it. Uh, and I've, In fact, I've done very little to it anyway, apart from a bit of protection under, uh, underneath on the bash plate. So if we look at the three elements I came out to look at. Um, acceleration, there's no real problem. You know, it's, it's not gonna rip your arms off. It's not like a sports bike. It's not like a hardened enduro bike. It's not even like a sports tourer. But it'll, it'll get there and it'll get there relatively fast. You know, it'll, you won't be hanging around. You'll definitely not have any dramas in traffic. If you're trans transitioning from a sports bike into the adventure bike world, then I think this is a nice, a really nice transition, you know. It's a different type of power delivery, uh, and I think it's a really good, uh, good bike to go for. If you're coming from a sort of dialed in enduro kind of uh, motocross world, and then going into adventure, yeah, you might, yeah, you might find it lacking in some power in some areas. But you're not doing enduro anymore. You know, this is not designed for giving you that that same excitement. It's not designed to deliver the same thing. It's designed to be able to kind of take you anywhere. And the engine can absolutely do that. Going around town, there's no, not much of a drama either. Able to handle itself in and about all the traffic. Um, and again, picks up lovely, no problem at all. So when it comes to knocking about in traffic, let's go and see what she's like in the town. Where we get out. Where's all this lot come from? You know, it's such an easy bike to kind of maneuver about. Oop, easy fella. Yeah, it doesn't stop people opening doors on you. Got his coffee and a cream slice. Or a custard slice, I don't know. I think it was a custard slice. The engine's fine for round town. You'll have no dramas at all. If that's where you're going to be spending a lot of your time, brilliant. The engine's fine for cruising around at 70 mile an hour. And again, if that's where you're going to spend your time, no dramas. And if you've been watching our channel for any time now, you know the engine's fine for being off-road and the power delivery is actually quite nice but <laughs> so that's brilliant you know 250 apparently not very powerful but it moves now top speed 
let's talk about top speed. So, from a standing start, going up a hill, it got to 70, and obviously that's the speed limit. Here in the UK, maximum you can go is 70 miles per hour. So it does the speed limit, and it gets there comfortably. And it will sit there, sit there at around about 7,000 revs, um, and still got two or 3,000 revs more that it can go. The engine's not struggling at that sort of speed, and I have sat at that speed, no problem at all, uh, on long distances across the country, when Mark and I have been driving to and from the Tet in Wales, uh, or Derbyshire, or even down to the uh, southwest, you know, um, and it's sat there fine. So from an engine point of view, she sits quite happily at 70 in all fairness. It's, um, with the L, it's the wind that gives you more, that I would say is a bigger concern at that sort of speed. The engine will sit there all day long, and it depends what you want. An adventure bike at the end of the day. But, if I'm honest, I still get plenty of excitement out of this little girl. I think she's brilliant. It's a shame I can't take it all the way up to its absolute top limit because of the law. However, I would say that if I was allowed to take it up past 70 mile an hour, then it would go all the way up to about 81 mile an hour up a hill and about 83 mile an hour on a slight downhill. That would be my educated guess. Now, when it comes to comparing the L to the Rally, there is a little bit of a difference. When we talk about top speed uh, and sort of performance, when Mark and I have uh, had a drag race, yes, we have had a drag race, we're absolute children. And um, by drag race, I mean, we've just seen how one's performed against the other. His Rally versus mine, when they were both stock, when we first had them, the L had the edge. It had, had a little, it was a little bit quicker, not by a whole lot, you know, it wasn't going to break any records, but a little bit quicker. So straight out the box, you know, when you first unwrap it out of the two, it probably is a little bit better performing. All the sort of windshielding and probably slight increase on aerodynamics by the rally doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to help it, doesn't seem to um, make too much of a difference. And I think that might be because the rally is a bit heavier. So it's got to carry that heavier weight, you know. However, when Mark changed himself to a 13 tooth sprocket on the front and, uh, and put a new exhaust on his, the, it, that actually did make a difference to the rally. And then the rally started to perform a bit better than the L. And I think that was largely down to the exhaust more than anything. But yeah, that was kind of what gave it a bit of a difference. <laughs> I mean, I love it. It always puts a smile on my face. Every time I go out, uh, it's, like, it's not going to rip your arms off, but it will move. You open that throttle and it'll go. You know, it'll, it won't sort of be stuck behind too much, really. Hey, are you all right? How are you doing? Uh, no, just down the road. <laughs> I, had to go to, I had to go to the shops, so... Uh, yeah, we've got a, a YouTube channel, so I thought, well, I may as well record a, a video on the way. Oh, you have to give me pink spice, but it's not wearing spice, so I'm half tall and I'm waiting to get on something That's cool. Well, I'll, I'll give you a shout out anyway on the coffee. You give you a little wave, I'll put you on the video if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can put it on our website. Yeah, brilliant, yeah. Yeah, you take care. I'll see you again soon. Always nice to get new subscribers and uh, welcome to the channel if you're watching this now. I know you said your husband was um, was into his bikes and you're looking at getting an Indian, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's brilliant. Another subscriber. Um, I forgot where I was now. So yeah, track racing. Uh, this one before, as soon as you started modding it up, the rally seemed to, and by one, I mean a little bit, but then the rally, seem to perform better but I am thinking of putting some bits on this now it's coming up to a year old and I've tried to keep it stock for a year but just see what it's like to ride it stock for a year and that video will be coming out soon as well uh, if it wasn't so cold today I would probably 
film that later. I just love it. My honest opinion, don't worry about the engine. Just get it and have a go. It'll be interesting to see how the 300L performs and where that sits. So overall, you won't have any dramas with the engine. Um, it'll get up to well in excess of the UK speed limit and it'll get to 60 easily enough. There's enough mid-range to overtake cars and it's never stopped me doing anything I needed it to do. How's about that for a wrap up? Thanks for joining us again. Do all the usual stuff, you know, like, subscribe, share, you know what to do. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.